Thank you, Pastor Ricky. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Carl, and I'm the uh, care pastor here at the uh, Family Church, and yeah. it's great to have you guys here today to hear a word from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I have to warn you. I have to warn you ahead of time, and as Pastor Ricky usually asks you guys, uh, do you love me? <laughs> I'm going to ask his question. Do you love me? Yes. Okay, a few people love me. Amen. Amen. Well, this is going to be a hard message for you this morning, for us, a hard message for us this morning. And because as we know, this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, comes with mixed emotions. And when I say mixed emotions, it's the idea that some of us, Memorial Day is about being off of work on Monday, we have a long weekend, and we get to barbecue in the backyard and just spend time with family. Or for some of you, it's an opportunity to play video games all weekend. <laughs> but to some of us, Memorial Day and the weekend is about remembering. Remembering those who have passed on. Our comrades who were in combat, as we saw in the movie, who have passed on. Those who have been in the line of duty have lost their lives. And that's what this weekend is all about. That's what it's all about. But also, that has been expanded for those of us who have lost loved ones. That during this weekend, we'll find ourselves remembering them. We'll find ourselves thinking about some of the jokes and things that they used to say. And we will often have almost a feeling that they're right there in the room with us. That is so close, is so real for us. And so this weekend, some of us will be right there because Memorial Day comes with those mixed emotions. And as we look at even further in the afternoon, some of you may be visiting funeral plots or doing all sorts of things, thumbing through pictures to remember those lost ones, those ones who have passed on from this life. And human death is always a challenge for us, always a challenge when that one passes away. Why, even yesterday afternoon, yesterday morning, Pastor David and I, we were doing a funeral for one of the members over at Westlaco. And so death has a way of visiting each and every one of us. It's not something that we can prepare for our loved ones to die, because we never know when that day is going to come. But all we can do is know that we have to be ready when our time comes, when the time comes that we stand before God to say, Hear those words from him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Those are the words that we want to hear. But when someone that we love or a friend, when they pass on, that death experience, that death experience, we have an option. We have a choice. And those choices are we can use that death as a period, as a question mark, or a semicolon. And I'll get into those points in a few moments. Joshua chapter 1 and verses 1 through 2. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon. You give us opportunities to make sense of the issues that we face in life, even death. Lord, you say in your word that death has been defeated and the sting of death for the believer is taken away. Lord, help us to understand Help us to embrace these promises. Lord, help us to put our trust and our faith in you and in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. As children of God, there's an expectation for us, even by our friends and relatives, there's an expectation of us to know what happens after death. People die every day. 
and we have no control over some of those situations. But among our friends and among our family, there's an eternal question that always comes up in the sense of what does death mean? What is beyond death? And this is an ideal weekend to be talking about death. And I know that it's going to be a challenge for each and every one of us. Death is a period, a question mark, or a semicolon. Moses, one of the greatest leaders that we have in the Bible, and he is responsible for having God use him to write the first five books of the Bible. And we call it that long word, Pentateuch. You can look it up later. Google, Google it, right? And so when we look at Moses and we look at his life and we look at, as we look at those first five books and we see all the great things that he has to say to us. But this morning I want to talk to you about his death. We've learned lessons from his life. We've learned lessons from these books. But I want us to learn a lesson from his death. Joshua chapter 1, as we were reading earlier, in verses 1 and 2, says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, and we understand in that whole idea with Moses that he was a servant of God, a servant as unto death. Sometimes we get into this mode to think that God has a retirement program. God doesn't have a retirement program. And the life of Moses shows that. Even in his old age, he was still doing things for God, still serving God. So somebody out there needs to receive that this morning. You may have retired from your employment, but now God is saying, get busy. Get busy. And so even as we look at Moses, a servant of God, doing as what God has told him to do, all the way unto his death. And the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. And for even, even as I think about that, for some of us, the, if our leader has died, story over. It's almost like, okay, let's pack up everything and let's go back home. And for the Israelites, Moses is dead. Okay, let's get the carriages and pack up the bags. Let's go back to Egypt. Back to a place of bondage. Back to a place that was corrupt back to a place where there was no life whatsoever for them. It was not a part of the vision and the dream that God had for them. And even some of us in our lives, that after the death of someone, we go back to what was easy. We go back to what we were comfortable with. And God is saying to you today that that vision that I had for you, just because that person has passed on, that vision has not died with them. And as we look at the, the life of Moses, as it came to an end, the vision that God had for the Israelites, the dream that Moses had in his heart, and as he was walking this out, it was not put into the grave with him. But God began to speak to somebody else. God began to speak to Joshua about what the vision was for them. And as you look at your family, as you look at your life, God has a vision for them. Life is not a period just because of death. I was talking to an older gentleman. I almost said young man, but he's an older gentleman. I was talking to an older gentleman. He was telling me about how his wife had passed on and how his life was insignificant because his attachment to her was his life. Everything about what they did as a couple, that was his life. She did everything for him. She called all the, what did they call it, all the uh, points and everything about his life. She was about making that happen for him. And he said, when she died, my life died with her. I'm just walking in existence right now. His existence was tied to her. You have to know the difference between grieving and disconnecting. He had disconnected. Disconnecting is an option, but that's not the option that God has for you. It's almost like a hole that the enemy puts you in or a hole that you fall into. You fall into that hole and it takes help getting out of that hole. It is not something that you do alone and it's a spiritual thing that happens in the midst of it all. 
where you have to reach out to God, understanding death has happened in our family, death has happened in my life, but Lord, I need to trust you through this. That no matter what is going on seemingly around me, Lord, I'm going to trust you through it all. Life is not at a period for me. Life is not at a period just because someone dies in your life. And yes, you love them. Yes, you want them still in your life. Yes, you're not ready for them to leave. But your life is not over. You're still here. You're still here. A lady in the service before me, she was talking about her sister and how she had died. And her children were left behind. And she picked them up. And now she is the mother for their life. You have to understand, life is not over. Life does not come to a period. And in talking to Joshua, we continue in that verse. It says, therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, <clears throat> the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. In other words, the Lord says to Joshua, my servant is dead, but now the time has come for you to step up. Your mother or your father or someone that you love dearly may have passed on, but now the Lord is saying to you, now is the time for you to what? Step up. It's not a time to shriek back. It's not a time to say, you know what? My life was surrounded by them. My life was a part of them. I'm giving up on life. My life is coming to a period. Yes, we get depressed. Yes, we grieve that one that we love so much. But grieving is a process that the Lord helps us through. As we trust him and hold on to him, all of a sudden we find ourselves coming up out of that hole because he lifts up, us up out of it. It's not a hole that we stay in, but it's a hole that we surround ourselves with other people that love us and they help us out of it. Amen. That's what God intends for that death to do for you. We have an enemy that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And yes, death happens in our lives, but death is not the end of life. It is the beginning for that one who knows Christ. And for those of us who are left behind, that can be a new beginning for us if we choose to allow the Lord to give us the power and the strength to do it. Or we can just settle and die physically, spiritually, mentally, but still in motion, but have no life whatsoever. It's the beginning. There's a gentleman in this church whose wife passed on. But you know, I see him here every Sunday. I see him with his kids every Sunday. It is his responsibility to take on where she left off. That's what I call a good father. That's what I call a good father. That he sees his responsibility. That he says, you know what? I have grieved. I have lost. But my Lord is helping me come up out of this. And my children will see how I walk through this. And then through this, they will see the miracle. And they will know beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is a God in heaven who is filling me, continues with a living soul, a living life. That's what it's all about, people. That's what it's all about. Yes, my mother died years ago. And yes, at that moment, I grieved her passing on. I have had friends in the military who have died. I have had friends whose life was given because of our freedoms. Yes, they have passed on. But my life did not come to an end just because theirs did. Mine took on a whole new beginning because of the power and the Spirit of God who was infused in me by me allowing myself to live and continuing the vision on. Life does not come to a period. Amen. It does not come to a period. I can do this, you have to tell yourself. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Because it's almost like when there's a death, it's almost like the life is sucked out of us. It catches us by surprise at times. And even on, on those times when we know that a death is coming to a mother or a father, we know that it's coming, it still causes us to stop and mourn and grieve. And we do that. You know, the moment we were born, we begin to die. The moment we were born, we begin to die. You take a newborn baby 
And after a few days, what do you see on that baby's crown? Dead skin, dead cells. Brand new, beginning to die. So death is not a surprise to us because the scripture tells us that it's appointed unto a man, what? To die. That is coming upon us. My day, my appointment, your appointment, it is there. But to those that are left behind, it is not a period in their lives. What happens when death is a question mark? Because to some of us, it's a question mark. This person has died. Lord, why? 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 And we have this list of questions that we began to bring to God. Lord, why? Why now? Why at this time? Why do I have to lose? And sometimes the Lord answers some of those questions, and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he says, trust me. Trust me. Amen. Trust me. And we know for that one who is in, in Christ that the word of God says that if they are in Christ, death is a new beginning. Not the end. A new beginning. But we still ask God those questions. Why? It's almost like when you're driving and you come to a stop sign. What do you do? You stop. How long do you stay there? For a few moments. If you stay there longer than that, the people behind you begin to what? Uh, 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 hey, let's move along in life. Some of us, death is like that. Someone passes away and we stop. Everyone in the family are trying to get you to move. But you're so grieved, so paralyzed by that death. Even God is trying to talk to you to say, I am here. I have not left you. Amen. I have a peace that surpasses all understanding right here for you. Let me in. Let me comfort you. As we look at the book of John, chapter 11, verse 32 and 33. And this is the story that involves Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus was their brother. Well, Lazarus had passed away. And Jesus was in Jerusalem. He was just a few miles away, not far from Bethany. And even in the story of the disciples, he tells them, I need to go to Bethany. Lazarus is sick. And then Lazarus passes away. And the disciples did not want to go back. And because they knew the last time they were there, people tried to kill Jesus. They were not wanting to go back. But then he said, well, we need to go back. And he goes back, and the story picks up in this chapter 11. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. And some of us, we go to God like that also. Lord, if only you had did this, if only you had done that, this would not have happened. Lord, you have all power, you have all control. If only you have used some of that power to do things my way, to do what I expect you to do. And he still says, trust me, trust me. Because he knows things that we do not know. Those in my family that have passed on, I wasn't ready to give them up, but I had to trust him. With Mary and Martha, it's amazing when they came to tell Mary and Martha that Jesus was coming down the road, Mary stayed in the house, and Martha went out to meet him. And Mary meets him with, the, with those words to say, if only you had been here. She began to ask questions. And sometimes we begin to ask God questions, and we get stuck right there in the asking of the questions. God expects us to move on. Yes, we can get fr frustrated with the death that happens with us, but God intends for us to move on. Verse 33, it says, When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. And he was deeply troubled. Then Jesus wept. The people were standing nearby, said, see how much he loved him. But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Again, 
looking at the situation, they're saying, couldn't it have been this way? Couldn't it have been that way? Because that's the way they would have orchestrated it. I know if I was able to orchestrate things, nobody ever would die that I love. I would just do this, do that, make it all happen the way I want it to happen. But let me help you understand, there's a God in heaven who knows a whole lot more than what we know. And it comes down to trusting him. And we know that God is not in charge of this world. Who's in charge of this world? The enemy, that one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is in charge of this world. And sometimes we blame God for what the enemy does to us. And so the question, we can ask question after question after question, but we have to know that that is not our destiny to just ask questions and stop. Our destiny is not to bring a period to our lives, is not to question. But what happens when death is a semicolon? Meaning that there's something after this. What else do you have after this? And when we look at the story that I told you earlier about with Joshua, when Moses passed on and God began to speak to Joshua, he said, therefore, the time has come for you to get busy. In the life that that one lived for you, they had a vision for you. They had dreams for you. The time has come for you to continue the dream. You have a destiny. The moment you were born, God put within you a destiny. God put within you gifts, talents to challenge this world in life. But we can allow those things to come to a death because of someone that we love so much who passes on. It doesn't die with them. It's resurrected. It's resurrected. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, verses 1 through 4. And it amazes me that when Isaiah, as he, he writes this, and what we see in Scripture, that he marks this with the death of a friend. And it says, It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He is saying, when this king passed on, life changed. And here he found himself in the remembrance of this king. He finds himself in the presence of God, worshiping God, seeing things that he had never seen before. And he begins to worship God. And I I just love this scriptures. It says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and his train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. With two wings, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. They were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the heavenly armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voice shook the temple to the foundation and the entire building was filled with smoke. What he is saying was, when this one was taken away from us, I found myself in the presence of the Lord. We have an opportunity that when that one passes away, we have an opportunity to find ourselves in the presence of the Lord and to begin to give praise and worship to him because he is the one who brings us that comfort. He is the one that makes us puts us on steady ground. We cannot do this by ourselves. And the one thing that we want to do, use it when someone passes along, we want to be by ourselves. We want to be left alone. That is the last place that God wants you to be. He wants you to be in the presence of him. The enemy is the one who wants to leave you alone. The enemy is the one who wants to isolate you. The enemy is the one who wants to steal, kill, and destroy even more from you. And if he can isolate you, he can destroy you, and he can also destroy the dream and the vision that God has given to you. It's not a time for isolation. It's a time for consolation to say, Lord, I intend for myself and you to be one with one another. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I'm not praising and thanking you for what has happened, but Lord, I'm praising you that you are here with me. That's worship. That's worship. 
That's where, and God is there to heal the broken heart. God is there to heal the broken heart. That can be, like I said, a period in our lives or a time that we can just find ourselves caught up with questions. Or it can be a time to say, Lord, where do we go from here? Therefore, where do I go from here, Lord? Because I know you have a vision and a purpose for my life and it's not to stop me, but to move me on. And in closing, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 in verse number seven. And as we know, that's the faith chapter that we're talking about. And you know, it takes faith to work through a death. It takes faith to work through those memories. It takes faith to move on. Faith in God. I can't put my faith just in myself because I will still be in that hole. I have to put my faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number seven, it says, faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming. Even things that had never been seen before. But he stepped out in reverent obedience to God and built an ark that would save his, himself and his family. By his faith, the world was condemned. As a result of his faith, there were those that passed away, those that died. But Noah received God's gift of righteousness that comes by believing. Sometimes through death, all of a sudden, God raises up a warrior. Through death, God raises up a hero. Through death, God raises up a servant. Through death, God has a vision for you, a direction for your life. Your life is not over. It may have taken a turn. You may have paused because of the death of this person that you love, but it's not the end. It's a new beginning. Let God in today to bring healing to your heart, to your spirit. Because death breaks us. But God puts us back together again. It's like that old story that you heard as a nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty and how all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty back together again. But there's a God in heaven, hallelujah, that can put you together again. Put you back together again. And that's what he loves to do. He loves bringing us together, his people, healing us, helping us. That's what it's all about. Allowing God to do what God wants to do in your life. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you this morning. Lord, we know this is a challenging message because some of us want to hold on to that loved one or hold on to the past. But Lord, you're helping us this afternoon to see everything in a whole new light. Lord, some of us are dealing with trying to forgive. Some of us are dealing with trying to forget some of us are just working on ourselves through this death. Lord, heal us today. Heal us. Bring about a new freedom in our lives today. We recognize that we cannot stop and stay here. A pause is okay, but we must move forward. And Lord, we know that we can only move forward with your help. It's not under our own strength that we accomplish this, but through you. Touch our lives today, Lord. Touch our lives and bring that healing. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed, you might be here today and you may say, I hear you, Pastor Carl, and I've heard on several occasions people talk about this Jesus and making him Lord of their lives. I have never made Jesus Lord of my life, but I know today that I need to. 
I'm working through some issues and I know that he is the only one that can help me work through these issues. And I know that I need him. And I need to invite him into my heart. If that's you today, while all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed, if that's you today, if you just raise your hand and say, pray for me. I need this Jesus you're talking about. Thank you, thank you. Others, others, just keep your hand there for a moment. Others, I need this Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Just hold it there for a moment until I see it. We're going to pray in a moment. We're going to pray in a moment. Others, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. And you may be one of those individuals that I was talking about. Those of you, you can let your hands down now. But also another group of people I want to pray for. You may be one of those who seem to have brought a period to your life because of a death. And you did not know how you can get past this point. But you would say, today I realize what I need to do. I need a healing. I need Jesus to take care of it. I give it over to him. And if that's you, just raise your hand and say, pray for me. A death in my family or my life has stopped me, and I need to move forward. Amen, amen. Others, others, just raise your hand and just put it right back down and say, pray for me. Hallelujah. All over the auditorium. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to pray and with uh, that first group. As you repeat this prayer with me, Mean it in your heart. Otherwise, it's just words. And as you pray this prayer, God will come in and forgive you. Let us pray. Everyone pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. I recognize I am a sinner and I need you today to come into my heart and live this life through me. Forgive me for my sin, and I thank you that I am forgiven. And from this day forward, I will never be the same because you live in me. I am saved, and I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, Let us pray for the second group. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these individuals that raised their hand. Lord, there are times that they cannot even sleep at night for the thoughts that run through their mind. Lord, they were at the point of giving up, but you have shown them a light today. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will touch them in a greater dimension than ever before. Lord, may you lift them up. May the death that was coming to them in their spirit May it come alive because the infused power of the Holy Spirit touching them right now. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the healing that comes as a result of calling out to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you.